You may have seen some recent postings from the FPV WRA, that is FPV Wing Racing Association, about fixed wing racing and some of the classes and the rules. But many of you are kind of confused about where these rules came from and want to know where they really come from and if we really mean well. So in this video, I'd like to address those concerns and tell you where these rules came from. The truth is they were very well thought out over the course of several months. However, if you weren't in the tight knit group that was making these rules and setting this up, you probably think that they were kind of pulled at random. And the truth is they weren't. So let me address, first of all, the spec class. The spec class is to get everybody on a level playing field with a good performance airplane. No, it's a, not a top-notch racer. It's a good flying airplane that races well both upright and inverted that puts every single pilot on a level playing field because nobody likes to show up to a race where somebody's got a hot airplane that nobody can beat. This way, everybody has the exact same airplane. And sure, there's a lot of opinions out there that, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that, you should have changed this, you should have changed that. The truth is, is the airplane was designed via a committee of 14 people, where I personally took the feedback from all the people in the committee and put it into the airplane to come up with a spec. Now, some of these people were the Colorado FPV group that was already running spec wing races and the Northeast FPV group who was also running spec wing races very successfully. So these groups came together and formed this committee for this spec wing and the uh, FPV WRA spec wing is what came out of that. Now the specs are fairly loose. I give you quite a bit of room on wingspan and cord and that kind of thing. But the reason for that is so you could do it at home if you don't want to buy a kit. So if you're the type that likes to build from foam board, we encourage you to do that. That's the whole idea is to allow foam board to compete with the rest of the manufactured aircraft and make the event fun and not give anybody an advantage. However, we didn't sell out either. We made sure that the specs were written so that it didn't cater to any specific manufacturer. Thus, anybody can manufacture the wing or the electronics as long as they fit the spec, they are within spec, go for it. This really is focused on the pilots and the spec wings are some of the most exciting races because you see where true pilot skill really comes through in those races. Now there are other classifications such as the sport class which really should be called the flying wing class which this airplane right here is for that class. The wingspan is from approximately 34 inches to about 43 and a half inches of wingspan. The reason we chose this range is because this is where most of the racing flying wings fall and this is where they're most competitive. Now for the smaller flying wings we have the mini class that has that goes from 31 and a half down but from 34 and up you've got the sport wing class these are the planes that are really really fast crowd pleasers they're loud they exceed 100 miles an hour and they can still handle very very well that means they can hit the chicanes very nimble they can hit immelman's power loops the works and they scream and that's the idea these are the planes that really impress now we allowed fuselages, forward swept wings, pods, all that kind of stuff. The real limitation is two control surfaces, that is two elevons. So we don't make the distinction between flying wing and delta wing because we want to see diversity. We want to see people experiment with airframe designs that really see not only who the best pilot is, but who can manufacture the best airplane. And so that's what this class is about. However, there is something that's a little odd and that is the 850 watt limit. Where does that come from? Believe it or not, that's the convergence of two places. A spinning motor that you're putting 850 watts into will dissipate approximately 100 watts to heat and magnetization. Now granted, there are in runners that are more efficient and things like that, but approximately 100 watts will go to heat and magnetization, leaving 750 watts to actually propel the plane forward. Now, anybody who wants to look it up, 750 watts is right at one horsepower. So thus the power outputs of the motors are right at one horsepower. The other reason for the 850 watt limit is for flight time. So we want these airplanes to have a three minute heat. And at 850 watts, the common batteries people are using are 3,700, 4,000 or twin 1,800 four cell LiPo batteries. And guess what? 
in three minutes that battery is basically dead flat. So what this does is make sure that people aren't loading down their airplanes with heavy batteries which don't allow them to handle very well and get beat by a more nimble airplane. So it makes sure all the airplanes handle a relatively tight track and can still run it at very high speed. So if you are into developing flying wings or that kind of stuff or really want to run at extremely high speeds through tight courses, that's what the sport wing class is for. However, we have put down restrictions on certain things. If you want to use, say, a canard, which of course increases your elevator authority, or you want to use rudder to kind of steer the plane, there's a penalty of 75 watts for that. And if you want to use a flight controller, there's a 150 watt penalty. And you might want to know where this comes from. Well, if you have a computer flying your, a portion of your airplane for you, you can focus more of your attention on flying the airplane while the stabilizer stabilizes the airplane. And stabilizers, well, they're not very common. And thus, there needs to be a penalty for those people that want to run them so they don't have an unfair advantage to those people who are doing the entire thing manually. And what we found is that wattage is the biggest divide. The biggest divide between airplanes comes right down to wattage, and the next thing was that flight controller. And we found that the flight controllers at 700 watts ran with all the other airplanes right at 800 watts. And so from experience, the 150 watt penalty is just about right to put everybody on a level playing field. And that's where that comes from. Now the 75 watts from the idea of a canard or steerable rudders, the truth is, that's a guess. We really don't know because we don't have any experience with it, but we don't want people coming in with too much of an advantage, but we do want to see people try that kind of thing, so we don't want to put too great of a penalty on it. That might change in the future. In fact, all these rules may change in the future, but for right now, this is what we have. It's what seems to work, and that's why we're going with it. So there is another class for the smaller aircraft, and that's the Mini class. And the Mini class really is 31 and a half inch wingspan or less, and pretty much any airplane you want. You can do flying wing, dual boom pusher, I mean, canard, anything. And there's no penalty. You could run whatever aircraft you want. And this really caters to uh, two types of people. First of all, those the main focus was multi-rotor pilots. The, you see, the entire class was set up so multi-rotor pilots could get into fixed wing racing with minimal budget. We only want them to have to buy an airframe and a couple of servos, and then all their multi-rotor components will drop right into the airplane and then they can go fly. The other thing is, is small airplanes are usually really, really durable, so they last a lot longer. Well, at least through more crashes than their larger counterparts. But there are some rules here that may, people may not understand, like the watt limit. Why a 300 watt limit? I mean, we know we've got airplanes that are under a 31 inch wingspan that put out four and 500 watts bone stock. Why are we doing this? Well, the reason is because of the multi-rotor battery. The races are centered around a three minute race. And if using say an 1100 four cell battery for a three minute race, it will be completely dead flat at the end of the race if you're pushing 300 watts to that motor. And thus, we encourage people to use a 1300 or a 1400, which is a very common battery in multi-rotor racing, just to have a little bit of extra power in reserve to make sure you can finish the race. Also, multi-rotor motors are often capable of 300 watts. Now granted, this is usually their upper limit, and these are some of the larger motors. But 300 watts is usually within reach of mo most multi-rotor motors and multi-rotor speed controls. So we want to allow that to happen. You want to run multiple motors? Go for it. Just stay within the 300 watt maximum. However, there's a 50 watt penalty for a flight controller. And that penalty is for the same reason as a sport class. It is because if you have a computer stabilizing your aircraft, you can focus more on directing it around the course as opposed to those who don't have a flight controller. And since flight controllers in fixed wing aren't common, there needs to be a penalty to put everybody on a level playing field. Now, if you've dropped down to 250 watts because you took, had the flight controller, you could run that 1100 milliamp hour battery and have a lighter aircraft too, which will make it more maneuverable as well. So it's not all lost. The last category is what we call the unlimited class. And I know a lot of people said unlimited, that means anything goes. Well, no, unlimited means unlimited wattage. If you want to throw three or four kilowatts worth of motor into that aircraft, go for it. The wingspan just has to be between 48 and 60 inches so you can see it in the sky, and that's about it. It's, again, it's a three-minute heat. But unlike the other categories, 
This is set up around one or two laps. These are going really long range. This is not supposed to be for a short little nimble course. These are supposed to be long range obstacle courses, surfing mountains, flying through riverbeds, you name it, where there are lots of natural obstacles at very, very, very high speeds. So we want to open this up to all sorts of different aircraft, but it's not a, going to be a drag race. It's a gigantic obstacle course that just eats up the sky. So if you've got an airplane that you think is big and bad, as long as it's within the wing skipman requirements and the weight requirements, anything goes. You've got a 12 cell beast, run it. Just be sure it can make the three minute flight. So with that, I might be crazy with the FPV WRA. I hope this video explained what our rules are and where they came from and that they weren't just picked at random. So with that, I might be crazy. I look forward to seeing you on the racetrack.